Uh, so, um, last in lecture we were talking about Lewis dot structures uh, for covalent compounds. Uh, so let's take another example. So C3H4. So one of the classes I covered this, and one of the classes I had not covered this yet. So let's draw a Lewis dot structure for C3H4. So if you remember the first thing we need to do is count valence electrons. So carbon, how do we know how many carbon has? If you remember we go to the periodic table, carbon's in group four. So it's got four valence electrons and there's three carbons. So that's 12 electrons. And hydrogen is in group one. So it's got one valence electron, there's four hydrogens, so four. So we have 16 electrons to build the molecule. So whatever molecule you draw better have 16 electrons in it, or it's wrong. Okay, so this is a little bit harder than the problems we had been working in class. Uh, why, why is it harder? If you remember the second rule that I had was to put the atom that there's only one of in the middle and attach everything else to that. But in this case, there's not one of one atom, so you can't apply the second rule so what do you do now is just try try stuff trial and error so let's just take the three carbons and put them in a chain for example and then attach the hydrogens so we have one two three four hydrogens that would be one option and so we'll consider some other possibilities um, so three carbons in the chain we could have put two hydrogens on the end carbon and two hydrogens on the other end carbon and we'll consider another possibility. Maybe this carbon's got three hydrogens and the end carbon has one hydrogen. Okay, so what's the third thing that we do is give each atom enough electrons to make eight, eight total. So give everything enough dots, uh, lone pair electrons to make eight electrons around each atom. So uh, this first carbon already has two, four, six, eight electrons in bonds, so it doesn't need any dots. This carbon in the middle needs two dots, and this one needs six. Now, now all three carbons have eight electrons around them, so we've satisfied the octet rule. And then for this structure, two dots here, the middle carbon needs four dots, and then this one needs two dots. <clears throat> and for the last structure, the middle carbon needs four electrons and the end one needs four electrons. Now all the atoms have eight electrons and hydrogen has two. So what do we do fourth is we count the total number of electrons. Um, so for the first structure let's call this A. So we'll call this A, B, and C. So for A has one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. So that's 12 electrons in bonds. And it's got two, four, six, eight electrons in lone pairs. So it's got 20 electrons total. So it's got four too many. And if you did the same thing for structures B and C, you would see that they each have four too many electrons as well. So what do you do? So we count, um, so let's see. Count electrons does not equal what we uh, said in number one, we're supposed to have 16 electrons, four too many. So if you remember last time, if we have two too many electrons, that means we need another bond. And uh, four or less un unbonded electrons. So if we have four too many electrons, then we need to get rid of eight electrons. And we need to add two bonds. Okay, so let's take structure B for example. So if we take structure B, and so if we get rid of these four electrons and add another bond there, and then we get rid of these four electrons and add another bond between those two carbons. So now B has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bonds, so that's 16 electrons, so that's the right number of electrons. And if you count the 
electrons around each carbon. Each carbon has four bonds, so each carbon has 80 electrons. And each hydrogen has two electrons, so that's a good structure. So if we did the same thing for uh, molecule C. So if we get rid of these two electrons and add another bond between those two carbons, and then we get rid of these two elect four electrons and add another bond, so we'll take away eight electrons, non-bonded, and add two more bonds. So then we would have that structure for C. So now that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bonds, so 16 electrons. No non-bonded electrons, so that's got the right number of electrons. And if you check all, all, all carbons have 80 electrons, so each carbon has four bonds. Uh, so in this case, we have what's known as a triple bond. So what does a triple bond mean? Uh, that just means two atoms are sharing six electrons between them. Okay, and then if we did the same thing for molecule A, uh, so we're going to see that we have a problem for molecule A. So if we get rid of those four electrons and add another bond between those two carbons, then we have an, an issue now because uh, we could get rid of those four electrons and, and if we add another bond, then you can see there's a problem. So what's the problem with this structure? Uh, so the problem is that carbon in the middle has 10 electrons around it because it's got five bonds, which you can't put 10 electrons around a carbon. And this carbon only has six electrons around it, so it's not happy. So this is not a good structure. So molecule A um, was never going to work to begin with. But molecule B and molecule C uh, produces two possible structures that are both perfectly valid. We could have come up with another molecule as well. So I could have drawn this molecule with three carbons and a ring. So as you'll see in chemistry, a lot of molecules exist as ring structures. And then um, we have four hydrogens. So we could put those, let's put two hydrogens on the top carbon and one each on the bottom carbon. And then if we add a double bond between these two carbons, uh, then again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bonds, 16 electrons. Each carbon has an octet, so each carbon is happy. So this molecule D is a perfectly valid structure as well. So on a quiz or test, if I gave you C3H4 and asked you to come up with a good Lewis dot structure, I would accept molecule B, C, or D. Any of, as long as you could come up with one of them, that's great. If you go into organic chemistry, uh, then I would expect you to come up with all possible structures. So you would have to be able to sketch molecules B, C, and D. Okay, so that's it for C3H4.